Hello and welcome to Tech 18. I am Ahmad Adnan and in this video we are going to talk about all related to Azure on this project because we need to create Azure IoT devices and Event Hub as well. So we'll walk you through how you can do this in this quick video. So let me share my screen. While I'm sharing my screen, I highly recommend you to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you are getting a lot of information for you. All right, so this is my Azure portal and here you can create all the resources what you need here. But first of all, you need to have access to subscriptions. That's the main thing and the resource group. So you need to check with your IT team in order to get those things. So once it is there, then you can just directly log into your Azure portal and on the top you can look for Azure IoT Hub here. So once you click on that, then you have this Azure IoT Hub. And for this testing purpose, I added two. So inside to that one, if I go here, for example, I will get this resource information. And on the left hand side, you can see there is device options. So there are other things also like IoT, AS, configuration, updates, queries. But for now, we'll just focus on the device part. So click here, then it will give the list of available devices what I added here. On this example, I added this one, my Python device laptop one, which is this laptop. And then I added three different machines as an example, cutting machine, heat, heat setting, and then Tokyo. These are all some of the manufacturing in the uh, related thing, which is especially for full shoe manufacturing. So if you want to add a new device, but first of all, let's quickly create this IoT hub and then we'll come back to this one. So if I go to this home page of IoT hub and the top left, you have an option to create. So once you click on that, this is going to log into your new page and then here you can select your subscriptions. For now, I'd like to click on this one and I'll check what are the resource groups which I have access. So this is the reason which I informed you earlier that we need to have access to these things. All right, so now if I click on this one, I have these many options where I can create this one. So let's say, for example, I'd like to add on this one and if it is not there, you can create also the resource groups here. So here you can give it a name. For example, I'd like to give here real time intelligence, which is on December and 24. So yet this is giving me, I don't, value must contain only alpha numeric, no special character. So this is also not taking up. So instead of underscore, I can use dash here. So there are some of the naming issues, which is there. So for the safety purpose, I'd like to give it here RTI real time intelligence and then December 2401. So that's what I'd like to give it here. And the region you can select whatever region which you are. And here you have this uh, popular tags, which is showing up standard here. But if you click on this compare tag, it's going to give you the list of available tags for you. And here you have standard, basic and free. For now, we we'll, can select free here because if you scroll down, it's giving you a daily message of 8,000. Like I said in the previous videos, it is giving us 8,000 signals that you can send it to Azure IoT Hub. So it's actually for testing purpose, this is huge, right? And as you can grow further in your company where you are really implementing, then you can increase as when you required here. So this is the, one of the basic thing and this is one of the standard here. So what are the thing which you don't get on the free one is these two things. One is device updates for IoT Hub add-on and Defender for IoT Hub. These two things are not available on these two plans but this increasing plan, that's it. So for now, we'll just select this uh, 8,000 and click on OK. So this is going to be free of cost for you. So that's the reason. So I can just select here. So free IoT hubs are limited to one per subscription. As I already created on this subscription, so it is not allowing me to create that subscription here. So anyway, not an issue. So I can just click on review and then create, and then this is going to add on the regular things what you can add on this Azure creating of any resources. That's a regular process. So once it is there, so I'll just go back to my IoT Hub so I can use the existing one. So for example, if I take this one IoT Fabric Test 2, and this is basically added on this one, and the left-hand side, I can click on Devices. So there are no devices added here on this display. So we can just use this one for our testing purpose. And you can just click on Add Device here. So find certified for IoT Azure IoT devices in the device catalog. So if you want to set that, you can also define that. So device identity used for device authentication and access control. So you can define your own name here. So that's what I was giving up here. So similar to this one, I'd like to give it information about here, cutting machine, um, which is basically the cutting of any product. So cutting machine 01, but here I need to add something which is can be 
YouTube demo. So I'd like to give it here YouTube demo underscore cutting machine underscore zero one. So that's the name. And here is giving me your authentication types, symmetric key X sign in and XCA sign in. If I click on this one, symmetric keys must be in valid base 64 format with the key length between 16 and 64 bytes. So I'm not going to cover this in detail. If you need want me to cover that in detail, please let me know in the comment section below so that we can cover this on a separate topic. So it is giving us, I'm just selecting the default option, what it is there, auto generated keys, symmetric key, and connect this device to an IoT hub. It is enabled and there is no parent device here. So if I click on this one, IoT edge devices can be a parent for child IoT devices. The child device can communicate with the IoT hub through this parent device here. So for now, we'll just create one single device itself. So that's it. Just click on save here. So once you click on save, this is going to create that device here. That's it. What you can do here? There are certain other things which you need to keep here. Here you can see the authentication type shared access signature, right? So where we can get that? This is an important thing that you need to get. So in the Azure Hub settings here, uh, I think it is uh, on the security settings. Here you have a shared access policy. You need to click on this shared access policy and then you need to check on this one. IoT Hub owner, which has all the permission, which is registry read, registry write, service connect and device connect. But here are the other things they have limited access. If you want to use any one of those, it depends on your use case. But for now, I'd like to use this one. So once I click on this here, so this is giving me option this IoT Hub owner name. And here we have a primary key and we also have a secondary key and we have a primary connection and secondary connections here. So also all these checkpoints added here. So we need to use this primary key and we may use this primary connection key if required. So you just need to copy these two things in your clipboard so that we can use it on our Python script, which is going to generate to get the data here. So just click on these two keys and then copy it in a notepad so that we can use in our next videos here. All right, like we discussed on the previous video, the introduction one. So we need to install this VS code, which we'll cover on the next video. And here we just did one, log into Azure portal, create IoT hub, free tile, and then we need to register a device. And we need to have a primary key and we also need to have a host name, which is this one, and shared access key for this one. Shared access key, you can copy uh, the name and the primary key, which is nothing but this is the name of this one, shared access policies, and we just need the primary key here. So that is what we need here, primary connection string, which is the primary connection string. So these are the two, three parameters which we need to have. IoT Hub owner, uh, which is the name of the shared access key, which is access here, and primary key and primary connection strings. So you need to have these three things, and then we'll take it further. So just a quick recap what we did here. We just logged into Azure portal, went to Azure IoT Hub. We just added this uh, IoT Hub here and we logged in, uh, sign, sorry, we have gone inside to this one. And from the left hand side, we have the device management. Just click on the device and added a device with just giving a name with the default settings. And here under this security settings, we have a shared access policies. We just click on this one and you can click here, add access policy, or as you can also use the existing one. So here in this case, I use the existing one where it is IoT Hub owner. Here we need to copy these three things, which is the name here and primary key and also this primary connection string. So copy these three things and we'll see in the next video how we can use this in the Python code. But before do that, I'm going to share one more insight in the next video. Just stay tuned for that. So thank you so much for watching this till this end. Um, so if you like this video and if you want to continue this series, please let me know in the comment section below. Share this video with others like this and subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And see you in the next video.